Hey guys, so today I'm here to do my February, March, April, and May wrap-ups. Now, um, as you probably well know, this last four months has been crazy. I've been in Europe studying abroad and I was like way more busy than I thought I was going to be. I knew I was going to be busy and I wouldn't read much, but I had no idea how my classes were really, really difficult. There was a lot of work and I traveled like every single weekend, so I just barely had any time to read at all. In February, I was able to finish one book. In March, I finished two. In April, I didn't finish any books, although I did read a little bit. And then in May, I finished three, and those were all, like, after the semester. The first one I finished on the plane, and the last two I finished while I was back. So, anyway, let's get on to the wrap-up. So the first book that I read, which was in February, was Ignite by Lily Paradise. Now, this is a new adult book. It follows a girl who finds herself in custody of her three younger step-siblings after her um, stepmom passes away and it's just about how she has to deal with that and then she meets a guy next door and they fall for each other obviously because that's always what happens. Um, it was a really enjoyable read. I quite enjoyed the characters and the storyline. Um, it was cute and I gave it a four out of five stars. The next book that I read which was the first book I finished in March was Shadow Kiss by Rochelle Mead. This is the third book in the Vampire Academy series and I quite enjoyed this one too. I have to say I didn't like this one as much as Frostbite. That's my favorite so far. But um, there was quite a cliffhanger at the end and I can't wait to continue the series. And I gave this book a four out of five stars. The second book I read in March was Paper Towns by John Green. This is uh, being made into a movie and that's a lot of the reason I wanted to read it. It's about a boy named Q who meets this girl named Margot and they go on like this adventure throughout the night to get like revenge on people and then Margo disappears and Q has to try to figure out what happened, why she disappeared. It was a good, good book. I'm really glad I read it. I have to say I did not like this as much as The Fault in Our Stars. Um, I didn't think I would because not much can top that. That's one of my favorite books of all time. Um, but I did quite enjoy this and I can't wait for the movie and I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next book that I read, I finished this in May on the plane ride over here, and that was Say What You Will by Kami McGovern. This is a love story of two kids, one girl, the girl named Amy, she has cerebral palsy, and the boy Matthew has OCD, and they're kind of an unlikely couple, and things happen. There's no, like, insta-love, the romance develops very slowly, which I enjoyed, and um, the only problem I had with it is at the end, it just kind of turned really strange, like, just everything just kind of got like kind of unbelievable and it was just kind of weird and I didn't really enjoy that as much um, but it was a good read overall and I gave it a four out of five stars. Next book I read which was probably my most anticipated release of the year was The Air by Kiera Cass. This is the fourth book in the selection series. It was supposed to just be three and then she decided to add a fourth and a fifth book and I know there's been a lot of controversy about it, like people don't like that she's adding more books, but personally this is one of my favorite series ever. And so I was thrilled when I found out she was adding a fourth book. This is kind of more of a spin-off than like an actual book, but it was really, really good. I think it was just as good as the other three in the selection series, and I gave this a five out of five stars. And the last book that I read, I uh, just finished this like an hour ago, and that is This Star Won't Go Out by Esther Earle. This is a nonfiction, which I don't read much nonfiction, and it's about Esther Earle. She was a teenage girl who had cancer, and she was friends with John Green, and I think she was somewhat the inspiration for Hazel and The Fault in Our Stars. They have the same middle name, and The Fault in Our Stars is actually dedicated to her. So naturally, being a big Fault in Our Stars fan that I am, I wanted to give this a go, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it was interesting reading a nonfiction book because I don't read much nonfiction at all but I really enjoyed it and I gave it a four out of five stars. So that's all I've read the last four months. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again next time. Goodbye!